everyone. Um, get the slides up now on the screen. Can everybody hear me okay? I'm just going to do a quick sound check. Okay, looks like it. Thank you. Um, so I'm Kelly Murphy. I'm the Assistant City Manager. And here in the room with me, I've got Evelyn Prem, who is our Communications Coordinator. Um, and we've got a few folks present in the room. Um, so, you know, if we... And when we get into discussion, if they've got comments, um, we'll have them join us here at the table. Um, and just for a quick briefing before I turn it over to Alan and his team for introductions and then to do the presentation, I just wanted to um, give a quick um, summary of you know what we're doing here today. Um, we are looking for input and feedback um, for recreation. Um, this uh, process was... Um, defined and identified in the um, Country Club Road uh, actionable plan. Um, so it calls for a public process to review options um, associated with that site or our current facilities for the future of recreation. And we've engaged with Power Wellness to do that work for us. Um, and so we started back in July um, with a series of stakeholder meetings. Uh, we had intended to do an in-person um, briefing much like this one um, to get feedback at that time, but we had a little bit of flooding and actually we've got some rain in the forecast for today. So I'm thankful that we're able to do this um, today. And we've got one more um, remote public meeting coming up um, that uh, we'll get into at the end of this meeting as we close. But without further ado, I'm gonna hand it over to Alan. He's gonna walk through um, the slides that we have here. Uh, just wanna prime folks for there's a lot of questions in these slides. Um, so if we go through this process and you've got more comments, you can either reach out to Evelyn or myself. We also launched a survey with these questions. Um, so, you know, that's also available for people to submit feedback. Um, so with that, I'm going to hand it over to Alan. Thanks. Hi, uh, my name is Alan. Uh, I work with Power Wellness, and I'd like to also introduce uh, one of my colleagues, Nancy Bauer, who's the manager of our business development department at Power. Uh, just to tell you a little bit about us, uh, we've been in business for about 27 years. Uh, we help hospitals and uh, municipalities and health foundations to um, determine the feasibility, uh, develop and sometimes manage um, recreation and wellness facilities. Uh, we have a kind of unique focus on the wellness aspect of this, uh, which is providing specialized programs for people with chronic illnesses and working with local hospitals to make it more than just a recreation center, uh, to actually make it a place where people can go to have fun uh, with, you know, alone or with their families, but also to help improve their health status by participating in programs that we've developed with hospitals and physicians. Um, as Kelly mentioned, the, the purpose of our um, study uh, is, was really just to do a site visit to kind of get the lay of the land in Montpelier and to determine what made sense on a very, very high level uh, for the Montpelier uh, community. Uh, we were there for two days. We got to tour the recreation facilities uh, to meet with a lot of uh, interest groups that had various interests uh, to tour the country club property, the existing recreation center, um, and um, kind of get the lay of the land for the community. Um, uh, as you know, we go into overview and purpose. Our scope really at this point is just to get feedback from uh, the citizens of Montpelier, uh, you know, on the level of interest in doing a community recreation and wellness center um, and see what public sentiment is. Uh, we understand there are a lot of other competing interests and needs for funding in the community. And so our job is just to look at uh, wellness and recreation. We're not really looking at anything else, um, but uh, we did wanna talk to as many people as we could about that. We wanted to find out what services were important to you, um, what services were not important to you, and um, help you figure out what a new facility should look like. 
Um, as Kelly mentioned, we had a public meeting on July 26. So we have the one today, and then we'll have one on August 14th uh, at 5 p.m., which will be kind of an in-person and a uh, combination of in-person uh, and remote like the one we're um, having today. So the first question, and we want to get input from as many people on this as possible, is how do you individually define recreation and wellness? What is that for you? What does that mean to you? And so uh, anybody is welcome to kind of speak up and tell us what they think recreational wellness is. Anybody want to volunteer? Alan, we do have somebody in the room um, that yes. would like comment. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the microphone on the table for the folks that are okay. in the room. If you want to just come take a seat in this chair. Um, then we'll we'll have folks th that are here maybe go first and then maybe we'll take people online. Okay, that's great. Hello, my name is Nolan Carver. I'm a resident of Montpelier. I'm a local and a townie, an everyday pedestrian. I walk and hike everywhere, every day. I design my lifestyle just so I can be on foot. And so for me, I really define recreation in a number of ways. Uh, so much of my life is getting to the pool on a humid day, hiking through Hubbard Park, and getting my mountain excursion in somewhere, either in the park or in the hill section. And um, so um, I'm here in this meeting kind of to share that when I think of recreation and wellness in Montpelier, I'm just thinking in terms of nice parks and uh, mental health and access to um, hiking. And fortunately, our trails were recently refurbished after intense rains washed away roads up there. Um, so um, I just want to mention as well uh, that the tranquility I've enjoyed historically in Hubbard Park, uh, I feel like uh, that tranquility has been compromised. But I only mention that because I think maybe some other people will agree that we live in such a car and vehicle culture and even though we have shortages of population, essential workers, et cetera, there are more and more vehicles in Montpelier. And I am challenged when I'm a pedestrian crossing the crosswalk, although there are civilized and patient and respectful drivers, but it's been a learning curve for Vermont and I assume a certain responsibility as a role model to observe my right of way on a crosswalk. And it starts as simple as that. Um, pedestrians need to be respected and encouraged. Um, so speaking of wellness and mental health, um, it's just all about, it always comes back to walking and hiking. And so I look forward to exploring more of the country club road i've never really ever been out there um and um honestly just going back to the cars and tranquility one more time um i can hear vehicular traffic from hubbard park and that's route 17 and it's day and night night and day and with construction vehicles Every 30 seconds, it's loud. So I'm walking around town like this with my with my, my ears plugged, 
and this is after losing my summer last year due to a great flood. So it just seems like more and more, oh, speaking of the pandemic and the trucks, more delivery trucks. And so it's just been like so loud. And so I'm just um, sensitive to noises. And so that's my idea of wellness is sort of like finding that balance and like allowing like civility and like common courtesy uh, kind of to lead lead the way. Thank you. Um, that's very interesting input. I would be really interested to hear what you experience going to the country club road property and walking around there because I didn't get a chance to walk around it very much, but I understand there are a lot of beautiful trails that are kind of left over from the golf, golf cart paths. And it seems almost like a island with no cars around it. So I think it's an area you might really enjoy walking through. That's not, that's neither here nor there for this project. But one of the things that was interesting about that site to us was how quiet it was up there on top of the hill. Um, so I think uh, we have somebody else that wants to talk about this. Thank you. Excuse me. I, Thanks. I just want one more little note. Okay. Um, speaking of tranquility, we do live in a homeless pandemic and we do live in a heroin pandemic. And I have experienced the stresses of hiking around homeless encampments and I've experienced direct threats from drug dealers. So it's a very oh. precarious balance these days. Thank you. Yeah, that's sad, unfortunate to hear. That's a common problem for many of us these days. Um, so we have some other people that wanted to provide some input on this question. Adrian? We've got a hand raised in chat if anybody has time for that, but happy to let in-person go first. Adrian, I think you're muted. Oh, sorry, I didn't hear you call my name. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Good morning. My name is Adrian Gill. And, um, you know, this is really important to me in terms of our city and how we design recreation and wellness. Um, my background, I have a master's in public health and I've worked in this world for 25 years. And one of the projects I worked in was with the Blue Zones. And he, Dan Butner, um, one of his things that has always stuck with me was really designing our city for the people and having active transportation be the natural choice. And so when I think of recreation and wellness, it's how do we design our community to just be the choice that we choose? It's not going to the gym, right? So yes, recreation is, you know, we have a recreation department, but how do we think about Montpelier as being a destination for recreation and wellness? It's not just something we build. It's not four walls. It's everything we do every day in the design of our streets, the design of our, you know, sidewalks, our, our parks, our, you know, everything holistically should be designed around health and wellness. And, you know, in addition to that, I really am very, a strong advocate for, you know, inclusive design. So ensuring that we're thinking about all types of mobility, um, all types of, of brains and how they interact with our environment, neurodiverse um, populations, as well as, you know, zero to 99 plus. So I want to ensure that in our city, our recreation is included in the design of our city. And that is a, available to all populations in a way that we're able to move freely and um, it's not a choice, it's just how we live. So. Very interesting. The I know that recreation and wellness are two different things for some people, and I'm interested in what, where do you think, where do you get your wellness information from today, and where do you think it should come from, and people, where should people get it from? 
I mean, I guess we have to define what wellness information is. I don't know. I mean, my like wellness. We have the background to do that. Yeah, like, I, I mean, wellness could be so many things from mental health to physical health to medical health to prevention to, I mean, it's such a huge topic that, um, you know, I would love to see our city taking a holistic view of, of wellness and having, um, you know, uh, like a full court press around, they call it wraparound services. And so thinking about all of our wellness opportunities of our whole body being offered in multiple platforms and multiple venues within our city. Um, you know, it's, it's, I've worked in schools around the world and a lot of the schools that I've worked with have instituted that wraparound service model They've had dentists in the schools. They have psychiatrists, therapists, um, you know, primary care that are located within the building. And so it's just about removing barriers, right? We don't necessarily want people to have a barrier around access to wellness, access to recreation, because they can't get there. Like that is not what we want in our community, I think. And, you know, I've you know, the communities that I've seen be successful in these endeavors have removed all the barriers to these, um, you know, two huge topics and just have made it easy, affordable, and the design of it as part of our daily adventure and journey with how we do our, our life. It's not, it is not something extra. It's just what we do. And so where do we start with that? in Montpelier today. I, Alan, you've got people who've had their hands up. Oh, and I I'm think sorry. Should let, them, let them speak. Yes. Dayton's um, had his hand up for quite some time. Okay. So has Jessa and Shelly. So um, okay. can we let them jump yes. into the conversation here, please? Yes. Hi, Dayton. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the recognition. Um, no, I just wanted to be a quick question of clarification. When you, at, when you say it earlier that we're focused on recreation and wellness, nothing else about the Elks Club property here in Montpelier. Can you clarify that statement a little bit? Is this specific to the site or are you specifically doing a project to talk about the feasibility of a recreation facility as in four walls, building structure and the financial implications thereof? I'm just trying to kind of understand the context of this meeting and the project uh, to tailor my comment. Uh, well, we were we were brought in to look at the feasibility of developing a wellness and recreation center, but we weren't told specifically where it has to be. Um, so we've kind of looked at the existing recreation center. We uh, we too, you know the word basketball is we toured um, the recreation facilities in the community and we toured the the um, country club. So, okay. That's helpful. Thank you. Um, I, I would just add that I think for the community perspective, I'm going to echo the two comments uh, that came before, but simply is that, you know, I would say that recreation and wellness for people living here is physical movement outdoors, right? And whether that's walking through town to connect through places, where transportation to connect to the, the somewhere else, you know, I think it's a little bit separate from the building itself, but I'm president of the local mountain bike chapter. Um, and I know there's a lot of people that having access to mountain bike trails um, for youth, for families um, and for all ages is really important. And so I think wherever this site goes, wherever it looks like as a program for a future recreation center, I think thinking about the outdoors of it and its support and facilitation of connections um, and additional trail networks is probably top of mind for a lot of people. Um, and to the prior commenter's points, trail networks that connect to places um, are the most valuable because we can use those for transportation, getting out of cars. Thank you. So, um, Jessa has had her hand up. I, yeah, no, that, that's helpful. And I think your prior explanation about a, a center has also been um, helpful. Um, I think it's can I, I think of two sort of different things when I'm thinking about recreation. Um, one is definitely the everyday kind of outdoors, the use of trails, 
walking trails, biking trails, cross country ski trails, which haven't come up a whole lot, but are, have become a really important use of the country club site. Um, and then the other component, and maybe I'm thinking of this connected because of our current recreation department is a lot of youth activities, um, sort of sports and um, more indoor and team-based activities. And um, one concern I have when we're talking about a center is how kids get to those activities. Um, and the country club site really raises concerns for me. It is not easy to get to after school. Um, it basically, it, currently at least, the current is, way it works is parents have to drive. For example, when the Nordic ski team uses that site for after school um, ski practice. And, you know, understood when we have to get to ski trails, that's kind of an inevitability that transportation is a question. But for things like basketball and pickleball and, um, you know, taekwondo and things that happen kind of a reg on a regular, almost in conjunction with after school activities, I would really hate to see all of that have to be um, either driven or even taking a bus or something outside of our downtown when I feel like there are a lot of facilities, whether it's looking in, you know, sort of a dispersed model in conjunction with our, our school facilities or the existing rec center, um, as opposed to moving more out of the center of downtown that people can get to easily. So just wanted to add that perspective. Okay. Thanks. That's, that's good input. So a dispersed model is going to be easier for parents to get their children to in some cases. Well, I guess I would say walking distance from school is the easiest for kids to get to. So however that solution gets solved, I know there's concern about whether the existing rec site itself is big enough for all of the uses. So if there's not one downtown feasible location, if it requires a dispersed model, I'm just thinking that should be on the table. Okay. Um, but however it happens that kids can get to thing and not, and I shouldn't say just kids as many people as possible, um, can get to activities without needing to drive, um, is, is great. And so maybe some of those have to be at the Elks club because that has maybe space for cross country ski trails or sports fields, um, walking trails. That's all great. I think that's a good use of that location, but moving more kind of organized activities that have to be in an indoor setting to out of town, um, concerns me. Okay. Good. Thanks. Um, so um, in terms of facilities that we don't have today. Alan, we still yes. have one more um, community member that is. Okay, uh, thank you. Her hand up. Uh, Shelly Weeks, you want to maybe jump in? Hi, yeah, Shelley. hi. I think um, I just raised my hand to get some conversation flowing, but after listening to everyone who just um spoke. Um, I'm really just chiming in, in addition to everything that they just said. Your question is, how would you define recreation and wellness? For me, I work at the Family Center of Washington County. Um, I'm also, I do a couple of things there, one of them being child care referrals. Um, just in that position alone, there's a lot of struggle with child care in general, um, having enough of it, um, summer programming. Um, so really, for me, I'm coming at it at that angle. So defining recreation and wellness for me, recreation is movement of the body, right? Whether you're wanting to do it after work, on a lunch break, after school, whatever it is, it's like getting up and doing that thing that our bodies need and we learn from it, whatever it is, whether it's um, skill development or um, club type activity or whatever it is, it's, it's getting out of the mind part of our day and getting into the body part of our day. And wellness is just like the, our intention with that. So I would define wellness as um, what happens after, you know, as a, as a part of recreation, wellness is, is happening organically. So there's my answer to that question, just chiming in. I think everyone really hit the nail on the head with being outside, having space available. Transportation is a big one too. I'll just add that regardless of where it is. I think transportation has to be on the table of discussion because that's a hardship for many. That's all. Good, very, very nice. Uh, there are other people there um, that we need to hear from in the council yeah. chambers. Um, Alan, so we've got David Kindy, he was here online, and then we've got one member here in the council chambers that would like to speak as well. So David, if you wanted to go ahead, and then um, if the the lady here that would like to speak would like to go next, that would be great. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, I, I joined a little bit late, so I, I hope I'm not repeating what other people say. Um, just in terms of location, um, 
I, I just think that uh, the rec center itself, not, not out, outdoor activities, uh, which I'm a huge fan of, and um, and but I think the rec center itself needs to be in town. I think otherwise, going out to the Elks Club, it's a real suburban model, and um, I just don't like that model. I think it's the beauty of living in Montpelier. It's it's my understanding, you know. I know my own. The kids, when they grew up, they would leave the middle school and walk to the rec center. And, uh, and, and talking to people, young people today, I have grandchildren in the community that uh, kids are walk doing the same thing, you know, 30 years later. They're walking to the rec center. And uh, not only is it a real feel of independence for kids that they're allowed to do that, you know, starting in fifth, sixth grade, kids are walking there on their own. Um, it's just, it, it gets used as a result. And, uh, and all classes of people can use it as a result because they don't depend on, you don't have to be a two car family or have somebody home to get you there. So I, I really strongly feel the rec center needs to be in town. I heard somebody at the last meeting talk about RK Miles. If you're gonna build a, you know, a shiny new one, um, I thought that was a great idea. But if the choice is a shiny new one out at the Elks or, uh, versus renovating what we have, uh, I, I'm a strong proponent of renovating what we have. Um, I, I think that the trade-off for the shiny new versus uh, kids being able to walk there, um, and I realize it's not just for kids. I mean, adults walk there. I mean, my, my wife walks there to play pickleball. Um, a lot of people walk there. But I just I, I, I think we turn Montpelier into a, a suburb and we're not suburban people. We don't live here because of that. So I, that's where I would put my uh, emphasis is let's let's keep it downtown. If it's at RK Miles, awesome. But otherwise, let's renovate what we have. It's served us well for for a long, long time. And if we renovate it and fix it up, uh, it can serve us well way into the future. Thank you. Um, great. So, so Alan, I've got a member yes. here in the room and then I just want to give you a sort of a time nudge. Yes. So we're at uh, 1035 or so, um, and we've got about 30 minutes left um, for the remainder of the questions, uh, but great conversation. So I'm going to turn it over here to the member in the room. Um, yes, my name is Marna Murray. I agree. I think things have been well-defined in terms of what wellness and recreation means. A couple of really important things have been noted, and that's the lack of transportation um, to other possible sites. But the thing that I have not heard at all is a consideration for the pool site to be developed further as a recreational site. Uh, next week is the last week that the pool will be open. It's a very brief time for the summer. I admire the communities like Winooski and St. Albans with Hardak of creating year-round pool centers. I've seen the same kind of thing in the West where uh, indoor activities throughout a, a difficult winter make a difference. Um, I have not heard any discussion about the possibility of expanding the, the pool capacity um, for year-round or the expansion of the fields as those lead to mountain bike trails as well. Um, I would like to hear more about that. I would also be interested in understanding that transportation makes a difference and it could be different, not just single parents um, driving kids to locations. Thank you. Um, great input. You know, we should go directly to the, the fifth question um, which is what sp specific services or programs do do we want to see? I mean, this is the other really key issue. Um, what what are we lacking today? Um, you talked about the pool. We got to visit the pool, um, and so I think we'd like to hear more about what is missing today, such as the a year round pool access. What other things need to be part of this? whether it's centralized or decentralized.
I mean, people have talked about pickleball. People have talked about basketball. People have talked about swimming. Um, there's also the cost of operating a facility when you decentralize things, makes it a little more complicated for the for the staff to, you know, open and close facilities and to operate them and make them secure. Alan, th thank you for that. Um, we've actually got somebody in the room who'd like to speak on this topic Good. and we'll great. take members in the room and then take um, people online. Okay, great. Uh, thank you uh, for reminding me of this question number five. Um, so I'm a psychiatric survivor. I'm mentally ill. And fortunately, I have two community resource centers. One's with Washington County, although they're open Monday through Friday. So that means the weekends I have to improvise. Um, the other one is another way. Um, with COVID coming and going, they were they were coming and going. So um, my point in speaking today is uh, simply to remind our culture and our society, um, I'm, I'm marginalized and I need a safe, secure, sane place to go and do uh, thoughtful, creative activities and I am envious of the seniors and the senior center because it's so clean and constructive and safe in there. And it's big. And um, so um, speaking of wellness, I just wanted to mention that uh, recreation is, is more than just fitness programs um, and wellness is 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 more than just moving the body i'm thinking more in terms of the arts music classes culture the um the um performing arts upstairs here in city hall is essentially um unavailable to me uh because i'm either too anxious or i can't afford the ticket and so I'm thinking more in terms of something that I can casually walk into without any kind of commitment and then stay for 20 minutes and then leave and just have that open and, and part of something kind of like the rec center, but I have to pay for that too. And money can be an issue preventing me from access. Uh, so, so I'm thinking more in terms of um, the senior center and that kind of model and how we can have a community center that doesn't exclude anyone for any reason whatsoever at any time. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just jumping in real quick to say, I think there are several models around Montpelier that currently offer something. And I think the best way to determine what specific programs or amenities that we'd like to see would be a collaborative effort where, you know, maybe there's a stretch out between all of the entities and we just increase or accent that. So does all of it have to be in every single center? No, or whatever we're looking at here. I think that we can expand off of what's already there. Um, you know, recreation centers to me, almost always offer the same thing. So if we're looking at something that's a little different, I mean, recreation and wellness is individual, but if we have things that are already going on in one space, we don't, I think it's just a conversation to have with everybody. I don't know. I don't know how I would answer that other than to say, I would hope that it would collaborate with what's already existing and enhance that and increase the opportunities. Thanks, Shelly. I've got uh, another person here in the room and then we'll take it to the folks online. Hi, thanks. My name is Jen Roberts. Um, I just had two points that I wanted to make. One is the YMCA model is attractive because it provides a community center. It's not just for particular physical activities. There's usually space for people to connect and meet. And so other types of recreation, such as, you know, getting together to do, um, you know, some kind of a club or some kind of a meeting, those spaces are not spaces we have in Montpelier at this time, a, a, a meeting place for people. 
Um, so I would like that to be considered as part of the um, solution that we're heading toward. The other thing I wanted to bring up is that we, Montpelier is a center, a town center for a lot of surrounding communities. And I think it would really behoove us to include those communities um, in our solution. You know, we've talked about pools before and they've been too expensive indoor pools. And I don't know why, you know, if we were to combine with forces with Barry and Berlin, I feel like we could get there a lot more easily. And so I know that brings up additional traffic issues, but I do think that maybe Montpelier on our own, we're going to have trouble affording the kind of facilities that we would all love. And so I would like to see us reach out to the surrounding communities that use Montpelier as their downtown, um, or even that don't, even Barry or other areas to combine forces with us. Thanks. So, Alan, that um, concludes the folks that are in the room. Um, if we want to take, it looks like Jessa has her hand up. Yes. Hi, Jessa. Hi, thanks. Um, I'd like to, to actually echo a couple of things I've seen in the chat in terms of uh, sort of teenagers and young adults um, mm -hmm. wanting a space. You know, there, was a, there is a youth center, um, but it got basically flooded out um, in the basement of the City Hall. So uh, again, thinking of sort of a, a multi-generational or age kind of hangout gather, gathering space where people can have um, activities that are either planned or um, just informal. Uh, I would love, I'm kind of echoing a space, or sorry, a, space, a comment I think others have mentioned in terms of, and I know this, I think this has really been done, but kind of comparing what people would like to an inventory of what already exists and not duplicating. Um, you know, there is a, a pool in Berlin. Um, it's private. So if we talk about, you know, are there ways to increase accessibility accessibility to existing, maybe it's a sort of private public partnerships. Uh, maybe Montpelier doesn't have to create every new venue itself, but how can we make sure that folks have access to um, things like yoga classes and um, pool use at private locations and as opposed to building everything new. And what don't we have is I would say more of a community space, gathering space. Um, I, I echo there was, you know, no, no rock climbing. Um, also, um, what I feel like Montpelier doesn't have, and, and perhaps again, thinking more about the Elks Club site is sort of a launching off point for more rec outdoor recreational activities. So like a um, either where we're thinking about like a warming space for cross-country skiing or a, you know, bike hub before then going out on um, bike path, bike rides. So that's something that I feel like is sort of a gap. Um, and again, I'm sure this has been done, but again, sort of that gap analysis of what don't we already have and what could, what might we need to add to. Thanks. Do we have anybody else um, online? Alan, I think you can move on to the next question. We're we're running tight okay. on time. Yeah, I'm sorry. So if we could go to question eight, um, the um, specific challenges that Montpelier has that other communities might not have. Um, I, I think this is kind of an important question. Um, how is Montpelier unique in the services that it needs? Is, does anyone have any thoughts on that? I mean, one of the things I think that we've heard, particularly in these conversations that we've had today and before, is that Montpelier really is unique in, the, in an urban sense, that there's a lot of focus on the town, people come to Montpelier because they want to live in a community with that has a sense of town, um, and and not a typical place where you have to drive. Um, is that related to a specific health issue? Is there something that's unique about Montpelier that we need to be looking at in that respect? Okay, 
I mean, just one of the things I've I've noticed there there is an interesting dichotomy, and in that that is that people are very interested in outdoor activities like cross country skiing and bicycling and hiking, uh, which the country club road for property, for example, is ideal for. But people are also at the same time wanting to keep the, those daily recreation activities accessible without using a car, which is kind of an interesting um, dichotomy compared to a lot of communities. Does anybody else want to weigh in on that observation? So, Alan, I'm going to turn it over to the room to see if there's anybody here, but we've got a couple online. Anybody in the okay. room that wants to weigh in on this question? No? Okay. So um, we've got Adrian and then Shelly. Okay. All right. Thanks Hi, for that Adrian. question. Um, and I think Shelly wrote in the chat, I don't, I, Montpelier is not, sorry, it's not going to sound like me, but it's not a unique community. I think, you know, we, you know, what we lack is, you know, the vision for what we want, right? So what do we want in Montpelier and Central Vermont? I really think we need to think more broadly in terms of like, what is it that we want our community to be? Who do we want to, who do we want to be? How do we want to behave? How do we include all of our people, you know, from zero to 99, right? And with all abilities of walking, biking, rolling, wheeling, you know, cars, everything, all the modes of transportation in an inclusive environment to participate in activities that meet their needs. I think a lack of that really, really clear vision about our community is prohibiting us from making really data-driven decisions that will move us to, you know, these answers. And it is complex, but I think once we peel back the onion and really start identifying, you know, the answers to some of these questions and having clarity about where we want to go and looking at the data, what currently exists in our community so we're not reinventing the wheel, like doing an assessment of of opportunities that already exist. So we're not building a shiny new center that costs, you know, 10, 15, 20 million dollars. Um, you know, if we did go that route, how do you create those private public partnerships to invest so it's not coming from the city of Montpelier's, you know, taxpayer dollars? I think, you know, we I think the community is prime and ripe to have these conversations. I think it is the future of Montpelier to have these conversations. I have seen communities become ghost towns because we don't have opportunities for our community to engage, which promotes mental health, that promotes activity. Uh, I do not want to see that in Montpelier. Um, and so it is a, we're at a critical time to really start investing in this, in these areas and in creating opportunities for all. Um, and I think, you know, this is this happens around the country. It happens around the world. And I think we don't need to create anything new. We just have to look at what's worked in other communities and start, you know, doing some implementation, some testing, what's working, what's not working, how do we make it better? Um, and just, you know, kind of taking that approach and knowing that it might not be perfect the first time, but that's okay. We'll continue to make it better. Great input. And uh, Shelly, are we, Shelly's got her hand up. Yeah, I just want to, I agree 100% with what was just said and would say that with anything, um, transportation, I hear lots of people wanting something within walking distance. I hear a conversation about families needing to have um, something where their kids can do something after school until the child, the parent gets out of work. Um, so I think wherever it is, whatever it's, whatever it starts to look like, transportation is going to be the big, a big piece that needs to be in the conversations because I, I honestly, there might be a lot of empty storefronts. I see between, I live in Barrie, I live in Barrie town. So between Barrie and Montpelier, a lot of empty fronts, don't know if the space is accommodating, but it all depends on what that larger conversation is. And I think that Adrian's right. I think it's a larger conversation, not specific to Montpelier in general, but if it starts there, it can it can become bigger than that. 
and and be available for more than just Montpelier. Thank you. Uh, and um, I know Peter Cohn has had a lot of great comments online um, in the chat. And I want to just emphasize one that he made, I believe he made, which is that the Country Club road site is about maybe multiple phases of development. Maybe it starts as a recreation site and eventually becomes a location for housing and other projects. Now we're not, our job isn't to determine that. You've already done a master plan for that. Um, that was a well thought out, you know, well thought out document um, and very, very impressive amount of work. And another thing that, that's just a reaction to something that somebody said online is that we're not necessarily having to make a decision today between all one thing or all another thing. Um, our, you know, our, the job of our engagement was to see if there was interest in doing this. Um, and if there is interest in doing this, then I think we would go into a more detailed feas feasibility process where we would do more of the job like Adrian mentioned of inventorying what's there and seeing what the possibility is for each one of those pieces and the, are those pieces worth expanding where they are or renovating where they are and also look at the operational costs for the recreation department. How can the recreation department operate efficiently in multiple locations? So I just wanted to throw that out there. So do we have any more people in the room? No, no one else in the room for this. Okay. Particular... Um, our other, well, we'd like to encourage people in, and for you to mention to your friends to go online um, if they're interested to answer these questions online. We know that these are very general questions um, and they may not uh, necessarily be easy to answer, but they're really there just to spur a conversation about what makes sense. Um, and uh, the we've been just been impressed by the passion and the amount of feedback we've gotten uh, on all these issues and the way people feel about Montpelier. Um, does anybody, I think, Kelly, do you have any closing thoughts or other issues that you might wanna raise before we conclude? Um, so I think in closing, you know, we're just really thankful for the feedback um, and, you know, getting folks involved in this conversation at this juncture because it is critical. Um, I would encourage people to take a look at the survey online um, just so we can get the most feedback um, from this initial process. This will be iterative. We are taking all the comments so that then we can sort of move forward um, and hopefully advance some work in this area. Um, and then I just want to note that the next um, and final meeting as part of this input session um, is going to be next um, Wednesday, the 14th at 5 p.m. Um, and so that that's happening. So if if you you know know folks that you know couldn't make this meeting but could make that one, um, it'll be hybrid. I'm not sure that it'll be in council chambers just because we do have a scheduling conflict. We do have a council meeting that day, um, so likely it will probably be in the manager's conference room. So I just want to put that out there. Still here at city hall, but just in a different uh, room. Um, but that's what I've got for now. I just am really thankful to get the feedback. Yes, we are too. It's very impressive. We're enjoying the going through this process with you and we hope that we can continue to work uh, together in the future thank you very much thank before you. you go will you guys be emailing a link to that public input because i want to bring this back to where i work yes yeah, so i'm going to share my screen right now so everybody knows where to find the information online so just give me a second to get queued up here and i will take it on Thanks. And I'm just feeling, I was just trying to fill out the survey and it looks like you can only select one option for fitness programs or amenities that you'd want to see. I don't know if that's intentional, but just <laughs> noting it, oh. that it looks like a select one, not a select all. Thank you for noting that, Jess. I'll make sure I uh, allow um, multiple options there. Great. 
Thanks, everyone. All right. Working on that. So while Evelyn's pulling that, we did have a question in the room where the survey, you know, exists right now. Right now, we we've got it online, um, but we can also print cop physical copies of this and make sure that it's in the clerk's office. So if somebody wanted to, you know, fill it out in person, they could. They just would need to come into City Hall to do that. Um, and so I'm going to let Evelyn kind of take it away here for details on where to find it. All right. So everybody online, can you see my screen at the homepage of the Montpelier website? Yes. Excellent. So you'll go here. This is montpelier-vt.org. Uh, you're going to scroll down past the buttons and popular links, and you'll see the latest news carousel right here. And at the far left, there's the uh, icon here for the recreation and public input session. Um, right now, it's updated to session number two. Um, and after today, I'll update that. So it'll be information for the next meeting, um, as Kelly mentioned. So you'll click into this. And this is where all the information about this public input process will live. So links to the survey, how to join the meetings, the Zoom links, all of that will be on this page. So you'll scroll down and you'll see a brief introduction of what the process is. Um, that's basically the same summary that Kelly gave at the beginning of this meeting. And then you'll see the upcoming public input sessions. So here we are today um, on August 9th. And then so the next meeting here. And then if you scroll down further, you'll see the icon um, for taking the survey. So you would just click this picture or this link right here, and that'll take you to the survey. So the survey is all the same questions that you saw on the screen today. Um, we didn't get to go through all 11, so this is a great opportunity to um, see the ones that we didn't focus on, and please provide your feedback on those. That would be, that would be fantastic. Um, and then if you scroll down, you just see a little bit more info on how these meetings um, are organized. So we're, we, we meet for an hour and that's the basic um, strategy there. And then um, after today's recording is uh, ready, I'll add the meeting recording to the link here. So if you wanna click on this, you can watch it on YouTube. Um, that was the last, uh, the first session. And so I'll add the second one there um, at the end of the day today. And so from where we will be sharing all of this information, so on, um, here on the website, uh, first and foremost, so everything that we put out anywhere else, whether it's on social media or through email, it's all going to um, be duplicated here on this website. So you don't have to worry about missing in any information, for instance, if you don't have Facebook. Um, but we'll also be using social media. So definitely, um, if you haven't already, subscribe to our uh, Facebook channel, follow us on Instagram, um, again, on our YouTube channel as well. And we also post on Front Porch Forum. And then um, there's actually a link in, um, I'll go back to our um, homepage here. So if you, again, if you scroll down to the popular links down in the bottom right here, you'll see this notify me button. So this is a great way to stay up to date on all of the city's goings on. So if you click in here, I'll show you what that looks like. Um, so this is where you can subscribe to our newsletters and receive updates directly to your email inbox or text messages. So I'm currently signed in, but I'll sign out just to show you what it'll look like. So what you'll do is you'll go to that Notify Me page and you'll just follow these three instructions. So here we're asking you for your email address. You'll just pop that in there like that. And then you'll hit Sign In. And then it'll bring you to this updated page. And so you can check if you want um, email, if you prefer email or phone. And then if you do prefer or would like to uh, get text message updates as well, you just put your phone number in right there. And then you'll hit save. And then below there, you'll see the list of um, notification um, groups, subscription groups. So we have for the Country Club Road Site Project, You'll over here, because I'm already signed in, it's giving me the green check mark. But for you, if you haven't subscribed yet, that'll just be a check box. So you can just click that and then it'll subscribe you to that, um, that email update. So we are sending out updates on this recreation and wellness project through the city of Montpelier uh, general updates. So go ahead and click the check mark for that one and you'll receive updates um, when these meetings come about and any other important information that the city uh, sends out. And then you also see um, another good one just while we're here uh, to plug is the DPW weekly newsletter. So that comes out on Fridays and that's all about the public works um, updates. And so we 
th through the city of Montpelier also today, just because we are in a flood watch, we will be sending out um, notifications about uh, Tropical Storm Debbie as it moves through here. So just another plug for, for that as well. And then I'll pass it back to Kelly. Great. Um, thanks, Evelyn. So we are at time. Um, so we're going to head out for this meeting. Um, but if you've got any questions, comments, please contact Evelyn or myself. Um, and then we'll work through whatever those are. Thanks for participating today. Really appreciate it. Thank you.